Project for today is going to be this John Deere 175. I started to take it apart a little bit. I took the snap ring and the washer off the top of the spindle over here. This thing sat outside for a number of years and you can barely turn the steering wheel on it. And those, those spindles are rusted almost solid. So I've been soaking it, spraying some penetrating oil down in there on this side. This seems to be the worst one. The other side doesn't look quite as rusty, but we'll probably take that one off there too. I couldn't get it to take grease. These have a, a grease fitting down in there, right there, that I can tell that hasn't been used in a number of years. And the, the neutral position thing here doesn't work. That's rusted from sitting out and just a number of problems just caused from sitting outside. This is why you don't want to leave your mower sitting outside for even a few months can cause a lot of issues. You can see all the rust down here from the water underneath the seat here and by the gas tank, which is never good either. I'm gonna get a hammer and try to pound on that, see if we can get that out of there. All right, I got a big hammer. We'll give her a few hits and see what happens. Well, it's moving a little bit. It's stuck solid now. Good. I'll spray some more lube down in there. I'll try to go back up with it. Oh, that is really rusted. I haven't had one this bad in a while. It does look like we might be starting to get some of the some of the lube coming out the bottom, which is always a a good sign. I'll keep working that steering wheel back and forth and see if we can get that out of there. I think I'm going to let that one soak for a little bit and see if it loosens up at all. And well, I'm going to take the snap ring off of this one and get that one started soaking because I'm sure we got to take this one off too. We, or I couldn't get this one to take grease either. It doesn't look quite as bad, but it's still probably going to be pretty stuck. It does seem to be going down. This one already started to drop out of there, so I don't think this side is as much of an issue as the, the other one. I'll get a punch and we'll see if we can pound that down farther. Oh yeah, you can see how rusty that is. I'll have to get it out of there and wire wheel that off. Hopefully I can get it off with the steering all hooked up still. There 
we go. Oh, that's pretty bad. I'll get a wire wheel and we'll get that cleaned up. And move back to the other side and see if soaking it helped that one. These things work pretty good for cleaning out holes like this where they can't really get into very good. Well, that didn't clean up too bad. Let's try a little more lube in there and slide it back together. Got the weight of the other tire on there. I have to just let the jack down a little bit. Got that through there, Put that back on. And I'll get the grease gun and pump some fresh grease in there. Still plugged up, I'm gonna have to take that grease fitting out of there, I think. That's a little bit plugged up, doesn't look that bad. Just got some old grease in there. Yeah, jam a screwdriver in. I'm going to screw it back in there and try it again. There you can see it squish out the bottom. Well, that side's done, but that was the easy side. We'll see if we can get that other side of parts, and then it, hopefully it steers easy enough. I hope there's nothing else jammed up in it. I'll take the grease fitting out of this side too. See if we have any lube coming down through there. Kind of doubting it as plugged as the 
other side was. That's just full of rust. See if I can spray a little lube in there. some more I'm using a metal hammer so I'm trying to make sure I'm not rounding that edge over but these are pretty hard metal so it doesn't seem to be hurting anything down about as far as I can go without using the punch or something. I'm gonna work that steering wheel back and forth again. That's not wanting to budge. I'll, have to, I'll maybe get the air hammer and see if that'll make it move at all. Alright, I got the air hammer out. We'll see what happens here. It's moving, but really slowly. You can see down in there all the muck that's coming out of there. There's a ton of rust in there. I'll let the air compressor catch up and we'll hit it another time with the air hammer. Try it with the big hammer again. Man, that is stuck. Need to get a pair of gloves and a better punch or something to get down. I'll try it again. Well, I've been soaking it and pounding on it and soaking it some more and I think I'm going to have to put some heat to it to get it. This one doesn't have any plastic bushings in there or anything so the heat really shouldn't hurt it other than all the, all the lube I got sprayed in there will probably start to burn off of it. Actually, I might I'm gonna take this tire off. Might make our lives a little bit easier. Plus, it's already missing the cap and everything. If that'll even come off, that's probably still stuck on there too. Yeah, maybe I just made more trouble for myself. This has actual wheel bearing so you can see it's spinning on the wheel bearing but it's seized to the actual shaft. 
Well, I'm not going to fight with trying to get that tire off. I'm just going to be careful and try to keep the heat faced away from it. That's starting to boil the lube out of there, so I'm going to see if I can hit it with the air hammer again. Well, I got it to go down a little ways farther. Went pretty good at right away, and then it seemed like I don't know if it cooled off or what, but I'm going to try heating it a little bit more. Give it another try. Man, that thing is stuck. Let's boil in the let's boil in the lubricant in there. Hopefully it's sucking some of that down. Usually when you heat something up like that and then spray it with lube, it can kind of cause it to suck it down around. This must be starting to cool off now. But we're not getting any of the lube down through. You can see how dry that is. And I can't really pound up on it. If I could pound it back up through there, I might be able to spray some lube in there and then keep going up and down, but I can't even hardly turn the steering wheel now and I don't want to break the tie rods or anything pulling too hard on them. And I'm just going to keep on heating and I keep feeling the side of the tire so I don't get it too warm. I just turned it once in a while and that seemed to help. Well, that seemed to come all the way through when I sprayed it in there. At least the smoke did. Try it with the hammer again. had to be the toughest spindle I've ever had to try to pull out. I don't know what was sticking us in there. It doesn't even look like the end was mushroom that bad. Maybe a little bit. But that's insane. Well, now we'll get this one cleaned up and put that back together. Got a little bit of a burr down inside this tube and I got a little grinding wheel on the drill. I'm going to see if I can reach in there to clean that up. Let's see if it'll slide up in there now. There we go. I had to grind the top just a little bit. There was a little bit of a burr on there, but I'll well, grease that up and put it back together. There we 
go. That steer is nice and easy now. We'll put that grease fitting back in. Make sure it takes grease. And you can see it pushed it out the bottom. And a little bit on top. So that's good. Alright, well, smear a little bit of grease on this axle so hopefully it doesn't get rusted on there again. Grab the snap ring for that. And there we go. Before it took two hands to reef the steering wheel around and now I can easily do it with one hand. And now we'll get everything cleaned up and see if this thing runs. They had it running when they brought it in but then it sat overnight and I wasn't able to get it started again so I'm thinking we might have some type of problem with it. Might have something to do with that mouse nest that's in there. We're going to blow that out too and probably change the oil for them. It looks like it's been a while since the oil has been changed so I'll get everything cleaned up and bring you back. Alright we'll give it a shot see if it'll start. I charged the battery so give us a little bit better of a chance. Go. We'll have to dig into that a little bit more. I heard it popping a little bit. I don't know if it's the float might be stuck in that carb, giving it too much fuel. Sometimes it'll pop like that. And the way that gas tank looked, we might have some water in the fuel also. Well, it looks like the mice got the air cleaner. You can see the choke working in there. Well, you can kind of see some two marks on the spark plug wire up in there, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't have sparks still. I'll have to blow all that out of there. The fuel filter is hidden down in there. That looks pretty old too. Maybe I can get in there and change that too. That'd probably help. I'll maybe try that first, see if there's any water in that fuel filter, and then we'll go from there. You might have to drain the carb, too. I'm going to take this little piece off here to get a little better access to that fuel filter. I'm going to have to take the other side.
I can see it down in there a little bit better. Take the pliers underneath and pinch off that fuel line so it doesn't leak on us. And take these clamps off. for that. I might go get a pan to dump that into so I can see if there's water in it. bunch of grass and stuff coming out of it. Doesn't look like it's got water in it, but there's a bunch of junk in there, so that might have been just getting plugged. I'm gonna pop that off of there and put a new one on. See if that helps anything. And you see a bunch more junk came out of there. That looks like a pretty old filter anyway too. So. We'll grab a filter and put that on and hopefully it'll start after that. One thing to note with these filters, this style filter that's like a paper element inside and not just a screen, these are for when you're using a, putting them on something with a fuel pump on it. You don't want to use these for a gravity feed system because sometimes it'll restrict it too much where it's, it won't flow fast enough if it's just a gravity flow. But being this has a fuel pump on it, we can use this one. Then be aware of, there's an arrow, I don't know if you can see that on camera, there's an arrow right there. Make sure that's the direction of flow. Otherwise you put them backwards and you're gonna fill inside the filter. You'll never be able to see if there's anything in there or anything and they don't really perform the way they're supposed to that way. Clamp slid down. This fuel line doesn't look the greatest, but wasn't leaking so all right well I'll leave the air cleaner off of it and give it a spin and see if it'll fire off for us Might set this. Might just set it on there. I don't want it to suck any of that mouse nest through there. I'll just 
set it on there for now. Let's we'll see if that did anything. didn't run too bad I didn't want to idle super good but we'll put a spark plug in it the new air cleaner and change the oil on it and hopefully it'll clear up a little bit I'll pull the spark plug and see what that looks like oh, it wasn't very tight Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Looks like it was burning okay. A little bit rich, but they might have been running it with the choke on or something if that filter was plugged. I'll go grab a new one of them and we'll throw that in there. These take a NGK BPR 5ES spark plug. socket got stuck in there and grab an air filter for it and we'll fire it up again and test it out see if it runs any better you take these air cleaner assemblies off there's a o-ring right here just make sure that doesn't fall out actually that did fall out when I took it off and I remembered to put that back on when I saw it sitting on the floor so you don't want a bunch of unfiltered air going in I didn't find a air filter for it I guess I don't have one but the the air filter doesn't look that bad it's just was that pre-filter on the outside that was chewed up by the mice so I'll probably just put a pre-filter on it I'll order one Still gotta blow that mouse nest out of there too. I'll fire it up again.
I just adjusted the carburetor a little bit that fuel air mixture screw is right down here. It's this screw here. That one was only out like a quarter turn. I turned it out about one and a quarter turn and then it seemed to clear up. So that must have vibrated shut or something. So now that we ran it a little bit, we'll drain the oil out of it. And then we'll go test it out. Well, I got to blow that mouse nest out of there, I guess, first, and then we'll go test it out. There didn't seem to be too much. There was just some hay and stuff in there. So I'll take that air cleaner back off, stuff a rag down in that carburetor and blow it out. Just a 14 millimeter wrench on that plug. These Kawasaki's usually like a 30 weight oil in them. These ones you kind of got to be careful too, you don't dump it in too fast, sometimes it'll overflow that tube. I think this holds just about a quart, so I'm not going to put quite the full quart in. We'll check it. We're over full, but I haven't run it yet. To fill that oil filter up. I think usually it's just about a full quart. So fire it up for a minute. that sit for a little bit and then I'll check it again and then we'll get it outside and blow that mouse nest out. These ones you don't thread the cap in either you just set it on top to check it. Now we're just at the add mark I'll just dump the rest of that cord in. We're still a little bit low, so dump a little bit more in. I looked on my chart and it said these hold, it said 2.7 pints, so it'd be about a quart and a half or so. I was thinking it was only one. There now we're now we're at the full mark right there. Now we'll go get it outside now. Finish it up. I'll air up these tires quick. And I stuffed a rag down in the carburetor. I don't get any more of that junk in there. No. Just hose it out there.
That looks pretty good in there now. See down in there, there's no more junk in there. This one is mostly just like hay and stuff, so I thought I could just blow it out of there. It seemed to work pretty good. And there's a little bit down in here. I got all that out of there. I'll get it put back together and go test it out. All right, I'm out here. My yard is getting pretty long, so we'll do a test and mow some of it. Alright, that seemed to work pretty good. Steering to the to the right is still a little bit less sharp than turning to the left, but a lot of these old mowers were kind of like that and the front end is pretty sloppy on this thing, so they didn't want to put too much money into it, so I think we'll just leave it the way it is. But that's going to do it for this video. If you like this sort of thing, like the videos and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.